Hey guys, it's Ruby. Today we're going to take a look at my completely homemade, do-it-yourself, wet, dry, trickle sump filter with a PVC overflow. Just to give you a basic overview before we get into details, this is where the water goes in, this is where the water comes out, and then if we take a look at the back, you can see the water follows a path down here, and the pump is in there, pushes it out through here. So let's see how it works. So this is the overflow. So what happens is, when water falls into here, this is at water level, when water follow, falls down into here, it can only come up to here, right? This is a U-bend, and it comes up to here, because water can't flow upwards. But when you put in this check valve, which enables you to suck water air out, but doesn't let air in, so the air from here gets removed, and the water comes flying down this pipe right here, and then it keeps going up, 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 but finally, it can't go higher than this, so once it gets as high as that, gravity keeps going and pushes it down. So this section right here, all the way continued down there, is, is always filled with water, ideally. And that way, the, it'll, have the, it'll have a siphon function, but works as an overflow. So water is basically going to go all the way down here, come through here, and now it's going to go through the filter process. So here's how it works. So I bought a, a ten dollar drawer. Uh, th it was three drawers from Walmart, but um, I cut off the bottom drawer and I cut that in half and put it in the top drawer. So it's it's two. As you can see, it's two drawers, but inside there's a, there's an extra drawer that ends about right here that I cut in half. So here's how it works. So the pipe from there, you can see it going in. If you open this up. You can see there's a pipe going under the water. I mean, under the in, inside that shelf that connects to it. I drill holes in it to spread the water out, and it's going over the first filter, which is my mechanical filter. So, the, but this is going to stop all the big things from going through. Then, on the bottom of that, I drilled a lot of holes and made it into what's called a drip plate. So the water is going from this shelf and dripping down on this. This is 100% uh, polyester stuffing and basically at the bottom there's sponges so the stuffing doesn't get through the next set of holes but basically the water is going to be flowing down here trickling down and getting to the bottom. Now once it gets to the bottom I put in even more holes. So let's see if you can see you can kind of see there the water trickling down. It's a lot easier to see. If I open up that drawer you can see the water coming down. So inside this shelf is a bunch of uh, is a bunch of plastic pot scrubbies and a little couple of PVC pipes. And basically, what that this is going to do, this is like the main filter system. This is going to this is called the biomedia. When the water flows over this, it's going to create bacteria colonies, which are super beneficial to the water, and they um, and they uh, yeah they do all sorts of. Uh, Sciencey bacteria stuff. I don't know. Look it up. But basically, that's why uh, the internet says it works. So that's why uh, that's why this is the most important. But because it's only half submerged, right? You can see the water line right here. So it's going to be. That's why it's a wet dry system. And then here at the bottom, we have the pump. And this pump is taking all the water from this. You can see the water line there, and shooting it back up here, and outside, right here. This is a ball check valve so if I turn it I can lower the water I can lower the pressure of the pump if necessary and what happens is let's say there's a power outage <laughs> hold on one second so here I've turned off the pump what's gonna happen is it's gonna cause a reverse siphon so all the water is gonna be sucked out of the air back up the pump so in order to fight that you can see it I drill the hole in there and another hole in the back, right about there. And when the water reaches that level, yeah. it's going to suck air into the pipe and it's gonna, it's gonna kill that siphon because otherwise, the, the way too much water would be sucked out of this pump. And as you can see, the water down here is filling up pretty fast because it's sucking out all the air from up here. So we'll let that, I'll show you how that, uh, that basically, it's like, it's like a, a kill switch. I'll show you why that works. So basically, so a couple cool things about this filter is first of all, you always maintain the water level. Because you see where this overflow is, it's at, oops, it's at water level. So what happens is when the water evaporates, it's not going to lower the water level in here. It's actually going to lower the water level in there. Because since the water level can never be lower than this, and the pump is always taking water from down there, so this is always going to maintain its water level, which is nice if you, if you want to keep your water level and not have to keep changing it and whatever. So that's one thing that's beneficial. Another thing that's beneficial 
is that because I have all my stuff in a separate tank, so I can put my heater in here, I can put a UV ray, I can put a carbon filter in here, and my tank has basically nothing in it anymore, except for these, uh, these decoration thingies. Another thing that's beneficial is because you have so much extra water that doesn't have access to the fish, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, it's like, it's just a lot of extra clean water on a constant basis. Another thing that's great is um, easy to do water changes. Instead of doing water changes up here, in this tank, you do it down here in this tank. So, that's, uh, I think that's basically it. The whole thing cost me about, uh, after all the returns I'm gonna make, it took me about, about a hundred dollars, because the filter itself was 30 bucks, and the, the drawer set here was, was, uh, 10 bucks, the hose was 7 bucks, the, the tank we already had, the filter media itself cost 10 bucks, a lot of the PVC connectors and stuff, uh, ended up uh, costing a lot of money but um, but um, yeah so one thing that's pretty interesting that you had that that we had to we had to figure out when we were doing it a lot of math involved is because and you let's see yeah you can see the filter the reverse siphon got shut off there so I'm gonna plug it back in and we can see it uh, working again so one of the big uh, big things we had to figure out when we were doing this is basically this, okay, this is a little complicated, but basically the pump pumps about 300 gallons per hour. So we have to figure out how much water can fit through this three quarter inch PVC. How much water can flow through it? Because if there's too much water coming out of here, then this is just gonna keep filling up. And if there's too little water coming out of here, then there's gonna be too much air coming down here with the water and it's gonna kill the siphon like, like it did when we were testing it last night. So you have to make sure that this pipe can handle this much output from the pump. But, it gets a little more complicated than that because the pump is a 300 gallon per hour pump, but because it has to go uphill, it has three feet of head loss, which means that for every foot it has to pump uphill, it gets less and less and less pressure. So, for example, at seven feet, it would be zero gallons per hour, and at zero feet, it would be 363 gallons per hour. So we had to try and figure out how much head loss is gonna be created by this. Not only that, but you have to take into account all the, all the bends, all the elbows, it causes a lot of friction. But here's, the main, here's, here's where it gets super complicated. So basically, over here, on the bottom of all these shelves is holes to make my drip plate. So, so basically that the water will trickle down. Now, what happens if there's not enough holes? The water is gonna start piling up higher and higher and higher, and it's gonna overflow. What if there's not enough holes? The water's not gonna pile up at all, and it's not gonna evenly distribute it over all my media, which is ideal. So you have to calculate the area of this pipe, and calculate the area of whatever hole you wanna use for your drip plate, let's say one eighth inch hole, and you have to see how many, how much area of the holes equals the area of this pipe. Because if it's the same, if the area of the holes inside is the same, then, um, then it's gonna pool nice, it's gonna spread around all the holes evenly and it's gonna fall down the water. Cause like, th imagine if there's only, if there was only one hole that was one eighth of an inch and this is three quarters of an inch. So the water is gonna just keep hi getting higher and higher. So you have to calculate all the holes combined from the drip plate from all, from here, you can't really see it so well, but um, you can see the water kind of dripping down there. So. You have to make sure that the water can handle em enough while also being able to pool to, to let it spread evenly. And then you also have to take into account, because it's going through polyester right here, the water is taking a long time to go down. And um, and so, whatever, basically it's complicated. Uh, Tati did most of it for me and uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of calculations. Most of the stuff I, 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 I kind of messed up on and I happened to get lucky on because I calculated everything pretty bad and it just it looks like it's working for now. We're still doing test mode. Um, when, it's, when it's ready, we'll push it back up against the wall. But um, yeah, I mean, as you can see, the water is very clear right now. Before it was like super green. Uh, probably the reason is because I ended up putting in like 15 new gallons of water in order to get it up to the high level and for the and for the bottom sump. So, so, so I guess we'll see how it works in the long run. And then one of the last, uh, one of the one of the final things is because this overflow works here. Let me see if I can get a good angle. Because it works as a skimmer, which means that 
all the things on the surface are going to get attracted to it. So all the all these harmful proteins and all this extra food lying around and all this stuff is going to get sucked down from the surface. And this pipe has holes in it so we don't lose any of our fish because we already had a bunch of fish that died. So hopefully this will keep a lot of them alive. And we might have to put a cover because fish in this house like to jump out. <laughs> but um, yeah, okay, well that was my uh, homemade do-it-yourself wet dry trickle sump filter with a PVC overflow. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.